Today, you're gonna learn the basics of FM synthesis, so you can start using some of music's most popular sounds in your songs. From the Drew Swisher here with Musician on a Mission, and today I'm going to be taking you through all the basics of FM synthesis. That way you can start tweaking FM presets and even making some sounds of your own. So first off, let's talk about what FM means. FM stands for frequency modulation, and it's one of the most popular types of synthesis out there. It was absolutely massive in the 80s, used by Prince, Whitney Houston, so on. The list goes on indefinitely. But don't be fooled, in addition to retro flair, you can get lots of incredible modern sounds using FM as well. FM can create everything from lush electric piano sounds, to blistering leads, But before you can start messing with FM, first you have to understand oscillators and LFOs. Oscillators are the part of your synth that create the actual sound. They make a waveform that we're able to hear. So here's an oscillator and I'm gonna set it to a square wave. Let's check out how that sounds. And many synths have multiple oscillators, so here in Massive I've got two that I can use and I'm gonna set this one to a saw wave and blend them together. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator, and basically they make your sound wiggle. Literally, that's what they do. They just wiggle your sound around. So here's an LFO added to an oscillator's regular pitch. And as you can hear, it's causing the pitch to move up and down. And of course, we can apply this LFO to other parts of the sound as well. For example, we could put it on the volume. And basically the key thing to understand about LFOs is you use them to affect some other part of your synth sound. You're modulating the synth with them. Unlike regular oscillators, LFOs don't create an actual sound by themselves, they just modulate another one. So let's hear it on the pitch again. And I'm gonna turn up the rate on the LFO so it's going to wiggle up and down faster. And you may notice that as I increase the speed of the LFO, it starts to change the actual pitch and tone of the synth. You know, before it just sounded like a sine wave moving up and down, but now it's got a sharper tone. We've just done a really basic form of FM synthesis. We've used one oscillator to modulate the frequency of another, creating an entirely new sound. But of course, an LFO can only move so fast. So what if we used a regular oscillator to modulate another? Then we open up a whole new world of possibilities. It's kind of like cooking. When you're making a nice dinner, you're probably gonna add some spice or herb on top of the meal. And this extra ingredient brings out some totally new flavors in the dish. And in FM synthesis, you're sprinkling one sound wave on top of another like a flavorful spice. And in the end, you get a totally new sound. So let's check it out in FM8 again. So FM8 is an FM synthesizer. It's certainly not the only one. Your job probably comes with an FM synthesizer synthesizer, and uh, I'm gonna show you the basics of FM synthesis using this. So first up, let's just use a regular sine wave here. And what you're seeing here is the routing matrix. So right now, only one of these six oscillators is actually being routed to the output, and that is this sine wave. And now let's turn on one of these other oscillators, and I'm gonna set it to a saw wave. We'll turn off the other one route the saw wave so we can hear it, and uh, let's check out how it sounds. So, like I said, this down here is sending it to the output of the synth, but what if instead of sending this to the output, we fed it into that sine wave we were listening to earlier? So what I'm doing right now is not sending this saw wave to the synth's output, I'm feeding it directly into this sine wave. Let's see how that sounds. We get an entirely new sound. And just to be clear, we're not stacking sounds on top of each other. You know, I'm not just 
playing these two oscillators at the same time. This is how that would sound. Instead, what I'm doing is using this saw wave to modulate and change the sound of this sign. And this is FM in full action. So FM uses two different kinds of oscillators, carriers and modulators. Carriers are basically just regular oscillators. They create the sound that we hear, and in this case, it's that sine wave. And modulators are the spice. A modulator creates a sound wave, but we don't actually directly hear the sound it makes. Instead, we're using it to change another oscillator. And in this case, the modulator is our saw. So the sound wave from the modulator is sent into the carrier oscillator. And this means that the modulator changes the actual shape of the sound being made by the carrier. And in this case where I'm using a saw to modulate a sine wave, the result is a much sharper, tinnier synth than what we had before. And of course, we could flip these around. We could send the saw wave to our output and instead use the sine wave to modulate it. Let's check it out. a much harsher tone. So just because we're using the same oscillators doesn't mean we're gonna get the same effect. The order of operations here matters. And of course we can get totally different sounds by changing out the waveforms being used here. You know, in old school FM synthesis, you'd only have sine waves, but nowadays you can use all kinds of things. So now I can use a uh, sine wave to modulate a triangle. And there are some handy ways to make some more complex sounds as well. For example, if I wanted this to be a little bit more full toned, uh, have a little bit more of the roundness of the sign, I could introduce that to the sense output as well. So now the sine wave is both a carrier oscillator that we're hearing, and it's modulating this triangle wave that's going to the output. We could make things more complex by adding in more oscillators. So now I'm introducing a third oscillator, which is also gonna be a sine. And I'm gonna send a little bit of it to the output. And I'm also gonna use some of it to modulate the other sine wave. So let's check out how that sounds now. Much tinnier sound, not necessarily what I'm going for something a bit more hollow right there. Once you add in a few more oscillators, the possibilities with FM are nearly infinite. You know, I could have just one of these oscillators actually being heard while the other ones are daisy chaining modulation. Or I could have multiple carriers. Or they could all play a role as a modulator. As you can hear, that's a really good way to introduce more noise into the equation, which could be good if that's what you're going for, but in many sense, it might not be. Another good way to get harsher sounds is to feed an oscillator back into itself, which is what I'm gonna do right here. And I know these aren't the most ear-friendly examples, you know, they're pretty harsh, but that's why a lot of the time you're going to be mixing and matching modulated sounds with less modulated ones. That way you can get some of the uh, harsher overtones that are characteristic of FM synthesis, but round it out with some less intense sounds. So just to summarize real quick, with FM synthesis, you're using a carrier oscillator to create a sound that we're actually going to hear and then you're using a modulator oscillator to change the waveform of that carrier and therefore change the sound that we're gonna get from it. And more complex FM synthesis is often gonna mix and match these, introducing more oscillators and some that are both carriers and modulators or some that aren't being modulated at all. And if we look through the presets, we're gonna see all these techniques in action. So here I've pulled up a D7 electric piano sound and as I click through through all of these different oscillators, they're all just sine waves that are modulating one another. So in this example, we've got a sine wave that's modulating another one, and we're not actually hearing that second one either. It's modulating a third sine wave. And overall, we get this sound. But then we've got a second set over here as well. And they're basically doing the same thing just with slightly different values right here as well as some filtering. And you put them together and you get this sound. Now let's take a look at another example. 
It's an interesting pad, so let's check out what's going on here. This is a pretty complex example, so we've got these sounds over here. providing a pretty floaty high note. And then over here, we've got something lower and more sinister. And as you're noticing between these examples, one of the big tools of FM synthesis is blending these sounds together. So one of these by themselves isn't gonna be super exciting. But when you use FM synthesis to blend sounds together, you'll get something a lot more complex and interesting. And of course, uh, having a good understanding of your ADSR curves, as well as filtering, are going to help a lot. And as you can imagine, once you've got the basics of FM synthesis down, it can take some time to get the feel for creating your own sounds or tweaking presets. But don't be discouraged or scared off, because now that you know the fundamentals of what's going on under the hood, you can open up your FM synth and it doesn't matter if it's FM8 like I'm using or something else, you can get a good look at what's going on with these presets and try recreating them. So what I recommend you do next, aside from continuing to watch and read tutorials, is to get some practice. Open up your synth and write down what's going on in here. So for example, I would pull open this sound and I'd uh, take a note of what's going on inside all of these oscillators. And uh, it's especially helpful if you really write it down. If you just take a screenshot, you can copy what's there without thinking about it. But if you write down all of the steps that are going into these presets, you're gonna force yourself to really grapple with what's going on in here. And uh, once you've written them down, you can open up another instance of the synthesizer and try to recreate it. So for example, I'd go into another instance of FM8 here and I'd pull up the matrix and then I'd start dialing in these settings to match what I've seen in the preset that I'm interested in copying. These presets are often made by professionals who understand the synth inside and out. So by doing this, you're gonna get a really strong understanding of FM synthesis in general, as well as the specific synth you're using. This same technique can work in any FM synth. You know, I could go into Logic's Retro Synth, for example, and pull up one of the FM synthesis presets in here. I could pull up FM bells and then write down what's going on here. And the trick of course is going to be looking through all the little folders of your synth to make sure you don't miss anything. And once you pair the fundamentals I was talking about in this video with the practical application of recreating these presets, you're gonna have a really good understanding of how to make your own FM sounds. Now, tricking your song out with awesome synth sounds is important, but it's just one part of making awesome music from home. If you really wanna make sure you get the most out of every song, make sure you check out this free workshop from Rob Mazes at Musician on a Mission. He goes over the seven steps to getting radio ready mixes and shows you his approach to home recording and mixing, which will help you do all of this way faster. 36,000 people have already done this workshop and it really only takes a few days to start seeing results. So check it out if you wanna avoid wasting your time and money on the wrong things and learn the seven steps you actually need to make pro mixes. And if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you really like it, hit that subscribe button with the power of me hitting my head against the desk when I was first trying to figure out what FM synthesis is. Drew Swisher here with Musician on a Mission. I'll talk to you again soon. And remember, create regardless. Mm -hmm.